going to show you how to make this contemporary silver and CZ pendants. And as you can see, the pendant moves around, it turns around, but it will not come out. And I further developed this design and come up with this one as well, which is a colored titanium dome section. And again, this is trapped in along with the stone and it will not come apart. I've stone set this section as well. So in the lesson, there's uh, how to set the stones and how to color the titanium. Uh, this lesson can be found uh, on the website uh, and it'll be under the gold level skills. I hope you enjoy. This is a design I did a long time ago now and unfortunately I needed some gold for another project I was doing so I melted it down. I regret doing that because it's quite a clever idea. The stone was uh, loose in the cup there and the only way it could get out is by removing the ring that goes around it and that was held in by a clip mechanism and it's not a very clear picture but that's a peridot in there. So I like the idea of stones suspended and I've got this idea at the moment where I just want to um, have a, a stone like this, it's just a large CZ and I don't want anything holding it with claws going around the girdle or anything like that so I've got this little clip idea I'm going to try out on this. The CZ I'm using is quite a large one, it's 12 millimeters. You can use a smaller stone, so if you do, just reduce the measurements I give you for uh, the project. Um, for example, this uh, piece of silver is 1.8 mil thick. Uh, keep the same thickness, but you can reduce the width of it. I've got a width of just over 10 mil, and I've got a length of over 20 mil. I'm not going to need all that. But the first thing I'm going to do is just level off the the two long sides, make sure they're nice and flat and parallel. So I'm using my nylon pliers so that I don't mark the faces of the metal. Need to square off the end here and shorten it as well. So we've got a 12 mil stone, so um, on top of the 12 mil, you need to add some for a bale. Uh, if you're going to use a thick piece of neoprene, then allow for that. Uh, I'm going to allow around about 7mm extra on top of the stone, so around about 19, 18, 19, so around about there. I can always um, sh shorten it later once I've got it working and I know exactly uh, how big to make the bale part. But now I'll just shorten and square it off. Just taking a measurement from the edge of the table of the stone to the edge of the stone, which is the girdle of the stone there. We can go a little bit over that. So I've got that measurement. Now I'm just going to put that onto the piece going from the straight end. And I'm going to cut a section out. And we need on the top part that's going across the table. I'm going to set that at around about one and a half millimeters. I'll mark the top line. So this is going on top of the stone. And make sure you go both sides. And then I'm just going to open my dividers up. And that measurement probably be around about two millimeters. Now it sounds random, but I just need it thicker because I'm going to spread the metal on the bottom side. And whenever you do mark, you always cut outside the mark anyway, so it'll be a minimum of that measurement.
Now this uh, end part here we can curve that so you can either just randomly cut a curve into it or set your dividers to keep it all nice and neat. Now I've marked both sides because as you're cutting the metal you need to keep switching over to make sure that you're not cutting offline. It's very easy to do that. Your saw blade tends to get stressed and it'll go off on its own little pathway. So You can see I'm way outside the line because I'm going to file up to the line. And I'm angling the cut so that it breaks through the bottom side a little bit behind as I'm travelling up on the front side. So once it's broken through on the other side, you can see if you're on, on the right track, you're cutting at the right angle that way. Keep flipping it over, make sure we're away from the line. If you find you're getting close to the line, then make that alteration. You're obviously cutting at a, a slight angle. Now, if you haven't got these nice nylon pliers that are very helpful, if you're using parallel pliers, that's fine, but you're going to have to clean up the faces. I've already emery uh, finished the two faces, so um, also you can do it by hand. It's just a little bit awkward. And you break blades. As you come to the curve, straighten your blade so it's nice and square with the work, and then you can just speed up the action of your cut and turn the blade. file up to the line. Now looking at where it's positioned with the stone, it still needs to be thinned off here before we can actually fit it and also we need to widen this part here so that we can um, get a nice big divot into um, get the collet locked into it. So now I'm going to go over to my mini anvil and start to hammer this section here to widen it. Now if you haven't got one of these then I'm sure you'll find something in your stake collection that will fit in here and you can always just clamp it in a vise and do it that way. So I've just annealed this as well so the metal should spread okay. I'm trying to keep the this part nice and flat as well. When I say flat, I mean I don't want it dipping in where I'm hammering. So all the movement I want is to go outward. see it's starting to move outward. I'm going to anneal that again. So back on the anvil again. Now I can see I just need to move the spread of the metal up. As you can see the stone is too far away from the end there. So uh, that would mean that this arm here isn't going to position itself in the right place on the table of the stone. So I'm just going to move it up another few mil and repeat. So if you don't strike it too sweetly and you're striking too much on one side and not the other, it's going to wander off a little bit. So if it does that, then just give it a side, sideways tap 
sure you get it reasonably straight. And I'll just finish off. I'm just going to take it up a little bit higher towards the curve. Looks a bit better now where it's positioned. This is obviously way too long, so I can shorten this now and just round it off. see it's going to be a very tight fit and this part here I'm going to slightly bend it out to get the stone in push it in and then I should be able to bend it back without um, causing any stress on the stone and even if it's slightly loose it's going to make it more attractive I think if it's got some movement to it so it's still very experimental what I'm doing but I'm pretty confident it'll work so I'll clean all, all this up. I'm going to drill this now, now that I can see where the position of the coolant will go. I'm going to drill it right through and it will be pretty much just slightly over towards the, the um, bale end that I'll drill. I want it quite tight in there to close up this gap here. Which means I'll just have to file this off at an angle to allow room for the stone pavilion. from the underside so I don't damage the top arm there and I want the fill hole to be just a bit off center towards that way and if I leave the hole small I can always open it up and, um, and move the, the uh, hole around to a better position if need be <laughs> just to open up the top part, or the, the uh, inside part. And this one's 1.8mm. I'm just going to run through the hole now with a slightly smaller ball burr which is 1.5mm. Now if you've not got as much of a spread uh, when you hammered it. So I've got 3 mil wide at that point there. If yours is less then don't use those size burrs. You're going to weaken it at these points here. And I need to bend this open a little bit now and it could break if you if you do that. Uh, and it's too thin. So now I'm going to very carefully bend this out. I did anneal it before so it shouldn't fracture. The point of the stone there is called a coolet and it's the most vulnerable part of a stone. So we're messing about with this part and you've got to be very careful that it doesn't actually make contact with the metal. So I bent this part out and I'm just trying it by just running the table of the stone along the top of the setting, the inside top, and then I can see that the coolet is now in the hole, I didn't force it in there, it's, uh, but it's at a position now that once I push this back down it should lock it in. Before I do that I need to clean up all around uh, the setting because I won't be able to afterwards as the emery paper will damage the stone. So just give it a little clean up. 
take it to 1200 emery and then I'll be ready for polishing. I'm polishing the places I can't get to once it's all together. It's ready for the stone to be fit now. Uh, as you can see I softened off the edges of the top part here. I just think it'll blend better with the stone. And I've not touched any of this yet because I still need to work out where the bale should go along here so that it's balanced properly when it's hanging on a chain. Now there's a couple of ways I could get the metal fold it onto the stone and because I've got them I would automatically go to my nylon pliers and use those but I can't assume that everyone's got the same as, as what I've got if you have then that would be the natural way of doing it but I'm going to use to start with I'll use the this um, copper pusher that's all it is it's just a piece of copper you can use brass uh, I just like to use softer metals against uh, stones. This shouldn't contact the stone anyway, but you can see I've shaped the end so that it should grip better. So position the stone and make sure that you can see the colour of the stone through the hole. And then... Just push it down, it's going to wobble around a little bit. See the colour coming through now. I'm not sure if it's going to stay in at that. Where is that? I, need, I might need to do a little bit more pushing. But it certainly turns around, which is really nice. The way that moves around. I'm going to just tighten it a little bit more because it's, it's got too much of a wobble. I'm just worried we're going to lose the stone straight away. Let's tighten it up a little bit. And I guess it's a case of really just going at it and just seeing if there's any chance it's going to come out. I think that's really happening now. There's a little bit of a bend there that I'm not over pleased with, but I'd, I'd much rather it be dead flat that way. But I think I can live with that. And it means I can kind of keep bending it until it is as secure as I can get it. I've just popped a saw blade through the hole and can't believe my luck it's balanced perfectly so the arm the front arm there is hanging just right so if I'd have positioned it wrong it could be tilted that way so now I'm going to open that up to take a chain got rather a large curb chain here so it means I've got to make it quite large as long as I don't move the hole down here and take it off balance. So what I'll do is I'll open it out, make sure the chain goes in, and then I'm going to give this a bit of shape around here. I use this bud burr to open the hole up. Ok, 
careful not to contact the stone at this stage. I'm very carefully using a brownie which is a silicon carbide rubber disc and it's great for cleaning up in tight areas like this but again you have to be careful not to contact the stone. There we have it, all finished, and the stone moves really freely, and I've twisted and turned it in all directions and it won't come out, so it's very safe. I've also hung it on this neoprene uh, necklace which I think suits it a lot better. Well it's had the full seal of approval from the missus, so it must be good. Yes. <laughs> Happy Christmas, darling. <laughs> Thank you.